In this video, we are going to see two types of sub configurations. First, we will select and insert a sub, in this case, UX218A in standard configuration. Place it on the audience area. Then we will duplicate by using copy and paste. For this configuration, we need to know the height of the sub so we can place one on top of the other. We can find the height of the sub in the rigging window. 0.51 meters. Place this value in the coordinate Z. Another way to do this is by using the side view. In the side view, we can place the sub one on top of the other just by dragging and dropping. Check that they're perfectly aligned. Once we have done this, we must turn the sub 180 degrees. And place one on top of the other. To the sub facing the rear, we have to apply the preset Cardio F2 in the input configuration. Once we have applied this, we can turn on Show Mapping and see the cardioid configuration in action. Now we can scroll through the different frequencies and see how they work. For this second configuration of gradient cardioid subwoofer, we will utilize a UX218A. Once we have the subwoofer, it is important to place it at the reference point of zero for Y and X. Once we have done this, we can use copy and paste to duplicate this up. It is important to place the second sub at a distance of one meter from center to center. Once we have placed the subs, we can place two microphones. We will use these microphones later to time align the two subs. The first mic colored blue will be put in the front part of the configuration. The second mic colored green will be put in the back of the configuration. The next step is to label the subs. The sub that is ahead will be named as UX218 front. The sub that's in the rear will be named UX218 back. We will use the time response tab to sync the delay between the two subs. First, we'll select the green mic as the reference mic. Now we can see that the difference in time from one sub to the other in the rear is approximately 2.9 milliseconds. This value of 2.9 milliseconds will be placed in the rear sub. Now we have both subs synchronized in time. Next is to balance the amplitude of the two subs. In this case, we will take 1 dB from the rear sub. Once we have aligned the time and the amplitude, we will need to reverse the polarity of the rear sub. Activate the mapping to see how the configuration works. Now you can see the difference in pressure between the front and the rear subs. We can start to change frequencies to see how each one works. Also, we can use the frequency response tab to see the difference of amplitude between the front mic and the rear mic. 